This week we had WPT's first live event since the worldwide closures and the World Online Championships continue with a brand new WPT Champions Club member. We have all that and more this week on the WPT. Hey everyone, I'm Lynn Gilmartin. This week we had the World Poker Tour's first live event since the worldwide closures. It took place in Tokyo, Japan, and it went off with a bang, breaking records. It was across two day ones. Uh, one of the day ones was at Sami Corp headquarters, and the other day one flight was at Hotel Gajouen, and broke records with 726 entries across those two day one flights. Now today, the final three tables return to play down to a champion, which is streaming on a one hour delay on Japan Poker Union's Twitch. And they'll be playing for a $35,000 WPT passport prize pool. Now, speaking of live events, my husband, Anhao Gien and I paid a visit to WPT's Aussie home, the Star Gold Coast, and it felt so good to be inside a casino again. I don't think we've been in one since March. Um, so they were kind enough to let us use a space there so that Angel could stream his WPT Mexico commentary for TV Azteca. Now, we had plans for Aussie poker players with a big event in September, October there at the Star Gold Coast, which those plans have been put on hold, but the planning is not on hold. Watch this space, the event will come back as soon as it's safe to do so. And the same goes for all of our events all around the world. Just keep watching this space. Now the World Online Championships continue and we have another brand new WPT Champions Club member. This one is so deserving. We've got Alex Gray with this week's update. Our newest Mike Sexton WPT Champions Cup winner has been announced one of the best tournament players in the world with $17.5 million in live tournament earnings alone. And he's only gone and just added $494,550 to his online poker accolade, taking down the Six Max Championship, Nick Petrangelo. It came down to Petrangelo and Axiom Prostak who were left heads up with Nick starting as the underdog with a one to three chip disadvantage. After two hours of contention, it boiled down to the hand that finished it all, where Petrangelo set up Prostak all in for his last 15 big blinds, only to be shown Petrangelo's trip tens. Now, please join me in raising your baccarat crystal glass, or otherwise, in order to toast our newest WPT champion, Nick Petrangelo. Yeah! Now, a quick look at our leaderboard situation, where Kristen Bicknell is still <laughs> unbelievably in charge of the player of the championship. And then over in our rising star, Boris Angelov is still securing his position up top. Jamie Kerstetter joined the WPT live commentary team for that six max final table uh, with Tony Dunst and Matt Savage this week. And it's definitely worth going back and watching the replay because Tony's watched a heck of a lot of final tables in his lifetime. And this is what he had to say about this one. But I have to say that was literally one of the best final table performances I have ever seen. And there was one hand in particular I really wanted to ask about. There was a hand where you turned a pair of sevens into a bluff on a four flush board and ended up getting your opponent to lay down the Jack of Diamonds, which I believe was the third nuts at that point. So a uh, two part question, I was curious why you selected a hand that already had a pair in it to turn into a bluff. And did you think you'd be able to make your opponent lay down such a strong hand? It's an awkward hand because he made a play on the turn that's, that's really low frequency and very specific hands. Um, but versus that play, the only raises you do make on the turn. So basically when I knew it was I didn't raise the button, he called the big blind. It was a monotone flop. I made a small C-bet, he called, and then the turn made a four flush, as you know. I think it was King 537. And uh, he led the turn, which is like a super specific group of hands. But against that play, you actually are only supposed to raise your 7x, like 9-7, 10-7, those type of hands. Based on the pre-flop setup, the way he was playing, he wouldn't have an ace. And he had just done something on like a King King 10 4 where he check called the flop and then led the turn, which was a total non zero play. Like the four would be a turn card that I would be putting a huge volume of betting in position. Like he should expect me to bet that card a massive percentage of the time for a huge size in the hand. It was like two hands before that. So if he's doing that, he 
he probably doesn't understand leading as well as he should and is probably doing it with too many hands and too linearly. So I just thought that he might be leading there way too much and then way under calling. So I just decided to put him in a spot basically. So you can watch the full replay of that six max final table on WPT's Twitch account. And there's also an alternate version that you can watch. Joe Ingram and Isaac Haxton. You can check that out on Joe Ingram's YouTube channel. Uh, and also, Joey took a deep dive with Nick Petrangelo. It's a three-hour conversation on the Poker Life podcast, so check that out on Joey Ingram's YouTube. And for some quick highlights from Nick's six max journey, check out Matt Savage's episode of The Savage Beat this week. Here's a preview. Let's face it, Nick Petrangelo put on an absolute clinic that even had great players like Tony Dunst and Jamie Kerstetter scratching their head. In the hero fold of the week, Nick dumped top pair of queens to Artisom's deuces full of queens in a hand that had to have Artisom ready to cry. I know I would have. Now, usually at the time of filming this video, I would have just wrapped up my Club WPT stream on Twitch with the legendary stream team. But today, I wasn't able to because this is the view outside my window, which is absolutely magic. I'm up in the mountains, right where the Daintree Rainforest meets the Great Barrier Reef. I'm here filming a movie, which I'm really excited about. Uh, but with that comes next to no internet. So I have to sit out the streams for the next few weeks. So check out those streams. Of course, Matt and Vince and Tony are going to continue, but we might have some special guests taking my place uh, over the next few weeks. And I'll be back with a bang in September. But until then, I will see you next week on the WPT.